Hey, it's Cliff, and it looks like the White House has decided to freeze federal student loan payments until May 1st. So let's go ahead and look at this article. President Biden, citing the pandemic, said on Wednesday that his administration had extended a moratorium on student loan repayments by 90 days, continuing a relief measure that began nearly two years ago under the Trump administration. The extension affects about 41 million borrowers, including nearly 20 7 million who have not been paying their monthly bill since early 2020. That is a lot of people not paying on their student loans. And then also, if we scroll down, there is a quote from Vice President Harris who says, I had student loans, Ms. Harris said during an interview with the radio host and television host Charlemagne the God. I mean, look, Right. Now, we have so many people, tens of millions of people in the United States who are dealing with student loan debt and responsibilities, and it's standing in the way of them being able to start a family or buy a home, and it's real, and we need to deal with it. And she's absolutely right. There definitely is a huge student loan crisis going on right now. I just don't think kicking this can down the road is going to solve any of that. It doesn't seem like there's been any thoughts on what we're going to do about this crisis yet. But I'm not a politician, and most likely you are not. So all we can do is think about what we can control. And what I would suggest in our path forward is that we need to just pay the student loans off and get it out of our life. So to begin, before you start working on your student loans, you should have a six-month, some people would say to a year, and even more now since the pandemic, uh, emergency fund. And then also typically what people will follow is known as either the debt avalanche or the debt snowball method. Now the debt avalanche deals with paying your highest interest rate loan off first. Mathematically, this makes way more sense and you'll save money. Or you can work on the debt snowball, which is paying your lowest interest rate to your highest, which has more of, of a feel good factor to it as you can see yourself checking off different loans and it, it motivates people to maybe want to pay off their student loans more aggressively because of that but anywho getting into this reason number one why i think you should pay off your student loans and not wait for the government to bail you out of this well student loans cannot be uh, discharged in the event of bankruptcy. So I always kind of think in the event that if something were to happen to me and my wife was grieving, she, she would be dealing with a lot of these issues. She would need to find death certificates. She's, she would have to deal with the government to discharge these loans. And it's just not something I would want her to go through. So I think the biggest gift that we can give to our family is to not let them go through this kind of headache. So we should just aggressively pay off these loans as soon as possible to just get them out of our lives and ultimately our family's lives. Moving on to number two, and this one is very nerdy. So if you're not into numbers, you might wanna skip forward, but it is the deduction. I always hear that people want to keep their student loans so they can claim a deduction. And this makes no sense and I'm going to get into it. But first, let's kind of define what the deduction is. So I have the IRS webpage here, and it says student loan interest is interest you pay during the year on a student qualified loan. It includes both required and voluntary prepaid interest payments. You may deduct the lesser of $2,500 or the amount of interest you actually paid during the year, which, okay, cool. So to get some information, here is our tax brackets. Now, I'm going to imagine that probably most people and just the median of the country is probably in the 22% tax bracket, which is around 41K to 89K if you're single or 83K to 178K if you're married. It's probably median, I would say, pretty good numbers. I looked at some additional numbers to see what the average student loan rate is. And it looks like it's going to be 30K, according to US News. And then I wanted to see what the interest rate was. And 
This is telling me that among all existing borrowers, it is 5.8%, but for new undergraduate loans, it is actually 3.73. So just to prove my numbers here, I'm gonna go with the lower rate because this is what most new graduates are coming into. So let's pull up my spreadsheet. Alrighty. So let me break down these numbers a little bit for you. So like I said, median median income, I'm gonna go with 50K. That seems about average for most people. That that tax rate is 22%. And based off the scenario that I'm gonna give forward, that would put our deduction at 1110, which puts us around 48, 890. And so basically breaking down the student loan. Now we said the median is 30K, so we're gonna go with that. We're gonna go with our 3.73% interest rate, which would show that we are paying 11.10 for an annual interest rate. Now, if I just took that number and I was just going to pay tax on it normally, you'd be t paying tax at $244. So essentially what these people are saying is they're they're keeping a loan that they're paying into like one grand of interest on to not pay $244, which clearly doesn't make sense at all because you're almost leaving like $900 there out that you could be investing in something else. You know, you could be starting a business, you know, crypto, you could be putting it in stocks. And there's a lot of things I could do with $900 that... I would rather not give to the government, but that's just me. Now, that's not to say if you are just starting out with your student loans and you're paying them off, of course you wanna take this credit because it is gonna reduce your taxable income, but it makes no sense for you to keep your student loan to get a deduction that isn't really saving you that much money to begin with, so. Moving on from that, number three is going to be that it's, it's costing you and it's affecting your debt to income ratio. Now I know when I was paying my student loans, I wanted to say I was probably paying at least like 300 to $500 probably a month. And every time I had to make this payment, I was just sitting there thinking, man, what could I be doing with this money right now instead of just giving it off to these loan issuers? You know, I could be, I could be in a new car. I could go on a vacation. You know, knowing me, I probably want to invest it a lot and try to get some passive income. But the the point is, I was giving away money that I knew that I really wanted to retain because I could be doing things that would better serve me. So. I would suggest that you aggressively pay this loan off so you can take back some of your income to do things that are going to benefit you. And moving on to my last one is going to be the stress that these student loans provide. Now, financial issues is the number one relationship killer in this country. And just to think of you're carrying around this debt, which is going to be projecting a lot of anxiety, and that's gonna go into your relationships, it's going to go into how you make business decisions, it's going to affect the choices that you make when you're at work, which could affect you getting promoted. So one of the reasons why we're all trying to achieve financial independence is so we can have less stress in our life. And in order for us to get there, we need to get rid of these loans not only because they're an extra budget item that we would have to factor into our equation of how much money we need to retire, but also because of the stress that they are giving us. And we just don't need that in our life because it could affect our health. And that's pretty much all I got for today. Um, I would definitely suggest that you pay off your student loans. Don't wait for the government because you're going to be waiting until you're dead. And at that point, they'll just discharge your loans anyway. So it won't, won't even matter. But yeah, um, thank you for all that subscribed in my last video. I finally reached 100 subscribers, which was awesome. That definitely made my day. And if you have any concerns, please comment down below. I try to answer every comment 
that comes across this page. So thank you for watching.